There's something innately magical about box puzzles. I think if you have an object that looks like something, feels like something, but is actually something else, I mean, that's super intriguing to me. Kind of like something you see in a James Bond spy movie, like a place to hide your like, your like secret stuff. I think within magic we have these things, but they're kind of kept secret, as in like a pen that does something, uh, that's supposed to do something, but that actually acts as something else to help the magic trick. And then you have like spy tools where the pen is actually also a camera or a blow dart or what have you. I think there's always sort of a tie between magic and box puzzles. And and let me give you an example. Here's here's a, one of the smallest box puzzles, one of the simplest, but also a magic trick. Check this out. Uh, so there's nothing in here, and obviously there's nothing in this little, this little slit here. Nothing to be seen on either side of these, which is, which is pretty normal. Uh, however, if you put this little, this little piece of wood inside this one. Now, nothing's gonna happen at first. You're not gonna really hear anything. But as I start to shake, I want you to imagine uh, that in that little place where that hole was, I want you to imagine that something's gonna appear there. Maybe, maybe like a coin or something. Now, just listen. Seems like, seems like something's inside now. Oh, there you go. And we have a little coin. Now this is such a cool little puzzle because I added that little auditory illusion thing. So that's something you guys can do. Uh, these are like $5 by the way. I left the link below. Uh, but basically you have a pin inside here and then you have these two little slits on each end. And what the slits do is they move around uh, where the coin is going to be. So the coin either gets moved, let's say that piece of wood is gonna go, is gonna push the coin. And then if I turn it around 180, now the pin is going to push the wood the other way, revealing the coin, which is really cool. And you, you can add that little auditory illusion by simply tilting it forward, shaking it side to side where you can't really hear anything. So, and if you tilt it down and sort of the coin uh, is resting on this side, so it doesn't really make any noise, but as soon as you start to move it this way, as opposed to here, so here, no noise. And then here, noise. So you can kind of make it sound like it's appearing. So same noise. So I'm shaking it the exact same way. I'm just tilting it. And now all of a sudden it makes a noise and a coin appears. So that's a little magic trick box puzzle thing, but that's not what we're gonna look at today. That little puzzle was $5. I, uh, I wanted something more elaborate something that would look cool on my shelf, but also something uh, that was a little more expensive than $5. The puzzle that we're going to try to solve today is a Kukuri Bad Radio Puzzle. <laughs> it's a box puzzle, it's a level seven, which is pretty difficult, and uh, it cost me $1,000. <laughs> All right, enough talking, let's try to solve this radio. So here it is. This is the uh, Kakuri Bad Radio. Why is it called a bad radio? I, I guess it's called a bad radio because it doesn't actually work. Um, it's not actually a radio. Let's try to figure this out. So first of all, the craftsmanship on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the dovetails right here. You got his little initial down here, little leather feet. So, I mean, so far this looks great on the shelf. I mean. It's a thousand dollars. I'd much rather probably have a thousand dollars laying on my shelf, just to be quite frank. So first things first, uh, the only movable objects that I can see are these knobs. And these knobs, um, they kind of go in any direction. They, you can't really push on them. Uh, and also there's something on the inside of here. If you guys can hear that. There's some type of spring and there's some type of, I don't know whether it's a ball or just a little piece of metal flopping around there, but I assume that has something to do with how to open this. Also this, this, and this seem to be three compartments. That's what I can make from the seams here. You got a seam and you got this little, I guess, I'm guessing this is a little drawer. Um, so let's try and figure this out. So my first instinct when I look at this is uh, I see this dial. So I'm gonna to try to like replicate that dial with, uh, with the three things here, maybe. Maybe that'll work. And the answer is no, it will not. Okay, I'll have to turn it upside down. 
I also feel there's a bit of resistance with these knobs when I get it to a certain, like right here. I feel like this is like super easy and then, oh, oh, super resistant right here. And I have no idea what that means, but let's put it to the super resistant part. No, okay. All right, also it has nothing to do with anything. Turning these knobs randomly at this point. Um, Nope. <laughs> oh god. Sometimes there are little secrets hidden in the seams. Doesn't seem to be. Everything seems to be reliant, contingent on this here. Um, there has to be a method for this. It can't just be random because puzzles usually have methods. I don't want to force anything. You know, you probably shouldn't force anything with these puzzles, to be honest. Hmm. Maybe it has something to do. What is that? Because this is a level seven puzzle, it is more difficult than your standard, you know, level three to five puzzles. So this is an extra bit of difficulty on this one. Just haven't quite figured out what the heck I'm doing, but. <laughs> okay, hold on. I don't know what, what that spring is. So, also, one thing that I've just noticed is that this little drawer sits under this piece here. And these two pieces sit under this piece here. So for all intents purposes, this piece here should be the first piece to sort of open up. It does move. This one here seems to be the only one giving me like proper resistance. Hmm. Sometimes the clue for these uh, these puzzles actually lie in the name. Now this is a this is a bad radio. So what do you do when a bad radio uh, stops working? Right. Whoa. Oh my God, I don't know if I broke it. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. <laughs> that is the most amazing thing I have ever seen. That's what was making that, that noise in there. Little joystick, pew pew. Oh, that's incredible. See, oh my gosh, so you've got a spring on the inside. This is the most amazing puzzle ever. Are you kidding me? The amount of engineering that went into this to figure out like, hey, this is a bad radio, so you're gonna have to smack it to get it open. Okay, um, now putting it back together, this is cool. You can put something in here, right? Paraphernalia, whatever you like. Look at that, that little brass, actually a little brass piece. Your spring here. Super, super cool. So if I remember correctly, the first thing that goes in is this. And then the dial or whatever this is. Right? And this thing. go. Okay, now just to check if it wasn't actually a fluke. Here we go. <laughs> that is the best. I'm so satisfied with my purchase. I mean, 
Okay. Yeah, thousand dollars is a lot, but this this is pretty awesome. Oh my god. I'm wondering like this looks really solid, but I'm always afraid like <laughs> you don't want to smack it too hard. Yeah. Bam. That's got to be the greatest way to open a puzzle ever. Especially for me because I get so frustrated <laughs> with these puzzles that like I always just want to smack them and this one actually allows me to smack it. Wow, very cool. Let's uh, let's give you a view from the front what this looks like. You guys ready to see how to solve this puzzle? Here we go. <laughs> this is without a doubt the most satisfying puzzle to solve. I love this so much. And that is the bad radio. All right guys, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, me trying to... <laughs> I think that's why I like these puzzles so much because you start off on like this high when you get the puzzle. You hit this low because you're kind of depressed and like upset and frustrated because you can't open it. And then bam, something clicks and you open it. And, and, and that sort of curve is I think one of the reasons uh, people like solving puzzles because at the end you win, there is a reward. So anyways guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Right.